In this video, I'm going to talk about CVPs, art lines, and pulmonary pressures, and how they change when you have a MI. So first we're going to talk about a right ventricular MI, and then we're going to talk about a left ventricular MI, and how that might change these values and waveforms. So first, we've got our CVP measured in our superior vena cava here. Normal is 2 to 6 millimeters of mercury, although it might be higher if someone is on positive pressure ventilation on a mechanical ventilator. We've got our pulmonary arterial pressure, uh, which traditionally is quarters over dime, so 24, 25 over 10. That would be a normal pulmonary artery blood pressure. And then you've got your arterial line which is reading the pressure in your arterial system. Here we have it drawn in your aorta, although really it would be a peripheral line, like a radial art line. But it's interpreting the pressure in your aorta, and so a normal arterial pressure would be 120 over 80, where you want your MAP greater than 65. So normal blood flow goes from your vena cava to your right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, through your lungs to your pulmonary vein, left atria, left ventricle, and then out your aorta. So what happens when you've got a right ventricular MI? When you have ischemia to your right ventricle, if it's acute, all of a sudden your right ventricle becomes weak. It has decreased contractility. So for a given preload, the cardiac output is less from that right ventricle. So the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to become less efficient at pumping blood into the lungs. So as that decreases, we're going to have a buildup of fluid and a buildup of pressure in our right ventricle. So our right ventricular pressure is going to increase. That will cause a backup of pressure and fluid into your vena cava. So your pressure in your vena cava will go up, and so your CVP will go up. So you will have a high CVP greater than 6. So maybe it will be 12 or 16 of a high CVP. So despite your high CVP, so it looks like your fluid status is good, you're not getting blood out of your right ventricle, so your pressure in your pulmonary artery and in your lungs is going to be low. because the problem is in your right ventricle. So if your right ventricle can't pump blood into your lungs, the blood isn't going to arrive in your lungs, and so your pulmonary arterial pressure is going to be low. So if blood never arrived in your pulmonary vasculature, not much blood will get through and go into the left side of your heart. So your left ventricle is going to pump out all the blood it sees, which is not very much because it's all getting stuck previously in the circulation. So the blood pumped out into your aorta is going to be less and you're going to have a decreased systemic pressure. So low blood pressure, a low MAP less than 65. So this is a scenario in which you need to give more preload to that right ventricle to get it to contract because Whatever volume it was used to before, it's now gotten a whole lot weaker, so it needs even more stretch in order to, to contract and get anything like a normal cardiac output from your right ventricle. So this is a case where you might look at your CVP and say, my CVP is really high, I don't think it's a volume issue, but your right ventricle actually needs even higher volume than normal to have a good cardiac output. So in practice, this might be a scenario in which you see someone is having an MI, but you're not really sure where, and you give them nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin will vasodilate the periphery, as well as your coronary vasculature, leading to decreased venous return. So if we have decreased venous return, we have decreased pressure here in our vena cava, and we have decreased pressure in our right ventricle at a time when our right ventricle needs an excessively high pressure. So you might see someone's having an MI, give them nitro, and then see their blood pressure just plummet uh, 
um, because their right ventricle isn't working at all now. So that's a case in which maybe you should look at your EKG, your 12 lead EKG, and see if someone is having an inferior MI or right ventricular MI in leads 2, 3, and AVF. Maybe hold the nitroglycerin. A fluid bolus may also help this patient. So in a right ventricular MI, we're going to have increased CVP pressures, increased right ventricular pressures if we can measure them. We're going to have decreased pulmonary pressures, we're have decreased left ventricular pressures if we can measure them, and we're going to have decreased arterial pressures. So now let's see what happens with a left ventricular MI. So here is our basic drawing of circulation through the heart. And we'll put our values on here just for reference. So this is your pulmonary arterial pressure and quarters over dimes, 25 over 10, systolic and diastolic. We've got a radial or ephemeral art line measuring indirectly the pressure in your aorta. So we all know normally that would be 120 over 80. We want our map to be greater than 65. And then we have our CVP measuring the pressure in our superior vena cava. So with our left ventricular MI, we have ischemia in our left ventricle. So our left ventricle gets hypoxic. It starts working more poorly and we have decreased contractility of our left ventricle. So if we have decreased contractility, it's going to have a hard time pushing forwards because it's very weak and so our arterial pressure will be low. It'll be less than 65 for sure. So of low arterial pressure, our left ventricle is not working very well. And so pressure will start to build up where the fluid builds up in our left ventricle. So fluid will start to build up here because it's not being pumped out. And as a result, it'll sort of back up into our left atria and back up into our pulmonary circulation. So because the fluid can't go forward into the left side of our heart, it backs up or stays in our pulmonary vasculature. So our pulmonary pressures will increase, we'll increase pulmonary arterial pressure greater than 25 over 10. And if our congestion in our pulmonary vasculature gets sufficient enough, we'll start to see pulmonary symptoms. So we'll start to see that pink frothy sputum. We'll start to see hypoxia, dyspnea, all of the pulmonary problems from our left-sided heart failure. So left ventricular MI, blood isn't pumping out, arterial pressure is low, instead the blood backs up and we get high pulmonary arterial pressures. This is one scenario in which you might see flash pulmonary edema from an acute left ventricular MI. So all of a sudden the left ventricle stops working, blood can't flow forward so it backs up and you get pulmonary edema flooding your lungs. So if you're con Condition, your left ventricular MI continues to worsen or not get better, you'll have continued backup of fluid. So the fluid isn't flowing through out of your left ventricle, backs up into your lungs. From there, it backs up into your right ventricle. You'll have increased right ventricular pressures, 
that fluid will continue to back up and not move forward from your vena cava, so you'll have increased CVP. So with our left ventricular MI, if it gets bad enough, we're going to have increased CVP, increased right ventricular pressure, we're going to have increased pulmonary pressure, increased left ventricular pressure, because that's where everything is getting stuck, and then we'll have decreased arterial pressure. So the key to figuring out what's going on when you look at all your numbers is where are things getting stuck. If nothing's getting stuck, all your numbers will be normal. But in the case of a right ventricular or left ventricular MI or COPD, things are getting stuck somewhere. So with the left ventricular MI, things get stuck in your left ventricle. So all the numbers preceding that, your CVP, your right ventricle, and your pulmonary pressures will be high. Everything after the blockage will be low, which is your art line. If we look back at our right ventricular MI, the obstruction was in our right ventricle. So all the numbers preceding that were high. So our CVP was high, our right ventricular pressure was high. Everything after the obstruction or the blockage in your right ventricle is low. So your pulmonary pressure is low, your left ventricular pressure is low, and your arterial pressure is low. In the last video, we talked about COPD. With COPD, the obstruction was in your lungs, so everything preceding your lungs was high. Your CVP was high, your right ventricular pressure was high, and your pulmonary pressures were high. Everything after the blockage was low, so your left ventricular pressure was low, and your arterial pressure was low. So I hope this helped kind of put together what to do with all these numbers that we've talked about. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos. Thanks!